In this lesson we'll discuss how and why we create segments on a model and when one tool may be more appropriate than another for a specific task. Alright, so whenever we are ready to create our own custom models, the first thing that we want to determine is the base shape that should be used uh, to create uh, the form of this object. So with box modeling, it's about starting with a primitive that is our large object. And then we'll add segments to that to create the initial shapes of the form. So to get started with this, let's create a box. Now what we're going to be creating um, in this particular course is a dumpster. So to get an idea of what we're creating exactly, it might be a good idea to uh, pull up the images that we have of this original dumpster. And you might want to start looking at some reference images uh, that you can pull off of a Google search or something like that. So looking at this, we want to really pay attention to the overall silhouette of this particular object. Now if you're unsure of what a silhouette is, we have this image here that shows us the front silhouette of this dumpster. So what we're looking at, what we're most concerned with, is going to be the outside edges of this object. Now if you didn't know that this was a dumpster, you might have a little bit of trouble uh, figuring it out. Um, at first, but once we've we've said that, we can definitely see that this is the shape of a dumpster. Moving on to our next silhouette, we have the profile, and again, it's just accentuating the edges of this particular shape. Now, if we continue to move on through this, if we get kind of a perspective shot, we could definitely tell that this is a dumpster. Okay, so you can see the overall shape, and you can definitely see the major forms that we need to create first. Now the major form that we want to create first is the overall shape itself. Okay, well, It's going to be a rectangular shape. It's got kind of an angled top to it. And uh, some things that we want to keep in mind whenever we're building models is we want to build large to small. So we want to tackle the large forms and gradually work inward to the smaller forms and getting into the details. Now it's really important that you remember that the details can wait because if you start out small it's really hard to get the larger details back as you have lots and lots of segments to be working with. So remember work large to small. Now whenever we're creating objects like this we want to uh, tackle out the major, major form and then we need to start thinking about ways that we can start adding in some of the smaller forms. So once we build out the major uh, form of the dumpster, the major shape, we'll start to work on these truck mounts here. Now the truck mounts, uh, looking at them, they could be a separate piece altogether, or what we could do is we could add segments to our geometry and use uh, a different or a number of different tools to extrude out this particular piece here, this truck mount. And you can see uh, a lot of these different uh, details on this object are using these different types of tools. But before we can use any of those tools, we need to make sure that we have the polygons available. And that's where creating segments comes in. So let's get into 3ds Max and let's get started with this. First thing that we want to do is create our major form, which is going to be our primitive. Now with box modeling techniques, we normally always start out with a primitive like a box or a cylinder. So I'm going to bring out a box here and I'm going to get the proportions of the dumpster that I have there. And I could adjust the length, width, and height, but I'm going to go ahead and just convert it to an editable poly by right-clicking on it and convert to editable poly. Here I can grab the polygons and move those and get the exact shape that I'm looking for in my object here. So it's not quite as deep as it is tall okay, and wide. So looking at this, um, got a pretty good value going here. We might want to go a little, a little smaller on that, but I think that's going to work for us right there. Now we also have that angled top. Now we could do this um, by pushing and pulling vertices, or we could just grab the edge along the backside and pull that straight up and get that angle that we want there. So once we have that major form, you can already see that we've got most of the the dumpster at this point. 
now we're starting to work into uh, some of those different details, some of the smaller details. So now what we need to do is just add some segments to start creating those different elements. So like I had said, we want to create these truck mounts. So where do we actually create segments? Where do we put those? The segments need to be placed where we have major changes in the model. So um, anywhere that the model is changing shape, uh, we have a segment there. So for example, right here across the top of that truck mount, that is a very sharp angle. That's a 90 degree angle that comes out away from the main body of the dumpster itself. So there's going to be a segment right there that changes that shape. Same thing across the front and the back and then also the bottom. So initially we need to create some segments that will create a polygon that is going to be the proportions of this truck mount. So to do that we could use a couple of different tools. There are multiple ways of creating segments. We could use the cut tool, the slice plane, or even the uh, connect tool. Now each one will give us the same result, it's just that they will give it to us in a different way and some tools may be more appropriate than others in a certain situation. So to kind of discuss that, let's go through each one of those tools and discuss their advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so normally whenever I'm using the cut tool, I like to be in vertex mode. I just find it much easier to use. Now to find the cut tool, we can scroll down to the edit geometry rollout and you'll find cut. Now we can activate it here or you can right click and go to cut here in the menu. Now to actually cut, we need to either start on an edge or on a vertex. Now you can also cut right in the middle of a polygon, but that can create um, some unexpected results and normally we don't want to do that unless there's a very specific reason why. Now to get started with this I'm going to cut from this edge across the front and I'm going to cut across the back and I'm going to go all the way around the dumpster. Okay, So we'll continue to left click and create those points and then I'm going to stop right where I started. So I'm going to make sure that I hover right over the top of that vertex and whenever I left click it's going to merge those vertices together into one. Now you'll notice that I'm finished but it's still wanting me to cut. I can right click to end that cut and then I can turn the tool off completely to end my cutting process. Now we've successfully created a segment all the way around and this side is probably going to be good but if we take a look at our concept you'll look and see that the truck mounts need to be symmetrical on this side as well as the other side. And um, I don't think the segments are matching up correctly by using the cut tool. So let's take a look at this in our front view. If we hit F on the keyboard, um, you'll see here that this segment is pretty straight but there is a little bit of an angle to it. If we take a look at the front view, or I'm sorry, uh, the front of the dumpster by hitting L on the keyboard, you'll see that we definitely have an angle here. And if this side is not straight across with this side, we're going to have one truck mount that is lower than the other. So what we need to do is we need to clean up this segment. Now a way to clean up the segment or to make it straight, we could use a couple of different tools to do that. Uh, we could simply use our scale tool with all of those vertices selected in that loop. So let's make sure that we have all of those selected and let's scale in the Z direction. Now scaling in the Z is going to bring those all closer together in one another and once we've scaled those as far as we can go they will be perfectly straight in line with one another. So here you can see that line is straight. If we go to our left view you can see that that line is straight. Okay. Now that is one way of doing it and you notice that by using the cut tool in this specific situation it added an extra step. Clean up. So let's think about a different tool that we could use that has less cleanup. Um, another tool that we could use is the slice plane. The slice plane is going to give us perfectly straight lines along um, a specific edge. Okay? So under our edit geometry rollout, if I go to slice plane, you'll see that it gives me this gizmo. And it's a perfect plane and it can be moved rotated. Okay? So if I move this up and down the model you'll see that I get a preview of where that's going to cut. So if I pull that down 
a little bit further, trying to match up my reference image, um, I can go ahead and hit slice to finalize that cut. Now that's made a perfect line all the way around. And in this situation, the slice plane would probably be the best tool. Now, looking at the slice plane just a little bit deeper, um, it's, it's great for creating straight lines. However, once we start uh, rotating the slice plane around, uh, we can get into some issues. Uh, for example, let's say that I wanted to cut from the bottom up to this line right here, but notice the slice plane continues to go through the model all the way out through the edge of um, that slice plane. And that can be a little bit of an issue, and it can create um, triangles and ingons. So it can be a little unpredictable once we start cutting across uh, large expanses like this. So let's turn off the slice plane. Let's take a look at our final tool that can help us create segments on our box modeling technique. Uh, that tool is going to be the connect tool. Now with the connect tool, I like to use it with edge mode. So let's go ahead and turn on edge mode. And you'll see that we have connect. Now the way this works is you have to select a ring that we want to create a segment through. Now a ring is a set of edges that are parallel to one another. So if I were to select this edge and I come up here to the top and I hit ring, you'll notice that it selects all of those edges um, that are parallel in that loop. Okay. Now I could also do that same thing by selecting one single edge and holding down shift and selecting the next edge in that ring and it will select that all the way through. Now by selecting these particular edges I can hit connect and use the settings and you'll notice that it creates a segment right through the middle there. Now connect is great however it has one um, one minor disadvantage and sometimes it can also be an, an, an advantage. The disadvantage is whenever we connect edges like this um, if there is an angle, like here at the top, you'll see that our connected edge that we just created um, tries to average between the two segments um, on either side of it. So you can see that this is a perfectly straight 90 degree angle, whereas this one is more of like a um, 110 or 120 degree angle. So it tries to average the segment between the two. Now it does work really well if you have two perfectly straight angles. And if that's the kind of um, segment that you're going for, uh, this will work perfectly. Now Connect is a very, very fast tool, and it's one that I use quite often. So Connect is something that you don't want to get rid of, of your toolbox. You always want that to be in there. Now as a matter of fact, all three of these tools um, you should keep in mind because they are going to have their specific advantages for creating um, a specific detail on any model that you might create in the future. So now that we've created the segments that we needed for our truck mounts, in our next lesson what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to actually create that geometry from the segments that we've just created. And we'll start with that next.